On this week's episode of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, we have got a lot of news to get through. We have got news on Pokemon Go celebrating World Tourism Day. We also have news on PlayStation. Congratulations to the PlayStation 4, surpassing 100 million units. There is news on Luigi's Mansion 3. We have got news on another board game movie coming out soon. We have got some news on Dragon Ball Fighters. We also have three new games coming to Xbox Game, game Pass for PC. All this, plus the, all the achievements for Code Vein, right here on the Trophy Achievement Podcast. If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of your feet. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Gen Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow out today Saints, Ken Retro here and as you saw after that intro, my reaction to The Last of Us Part 2 trailer that dropped on Tuesday night and here we are, 2.21.20, that is when the game comes out on PlayStation 4, we are guaranteed to have it on PlayStation 4. So before we get started, there's always a big shout out to Boomerang Mentors. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial and you'll get three free game rentals. There are no late fees. You can keep the game as long as you like or keep it forever at a discounted price on the online store. 
That is boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. And of course, that jingle means we have got ourselves another gaming screw up of the week. Now, what could it be concerning, I wonder? Oh, yes, our good friends over at Activision. What have they screwed up this time? Let's have a look and find out. So, fans upset over Call of Duty Modern Warfare's year long PS4 exclusive mode, Infinity War React. Oh boy, so here we go. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Special Ops Survival Mode will be exclusive to PlayStation 4 for a year and fans are not happy. Gee, I wonder why! During Sony's latest State of Play livestream, Activision took the opportunity to reveal a brand new story trailer for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, giving us our first real look at its ripped from the headlines campaign. Following this trailer, the screen popped up with the text Special Ops Survival Mode, play first on PlayStation 4, with much smaller text on the bottom that read timed exclusive content until October 1st, 2020. Now that raises a lot of red flags right out of the gate. First off, screw you Activision for continuing your exclusivity BS. I can't say the actual word because I'll, because I'll get busted. Anyway, and second of all, congratulations on shafting Xbox and PC. It is just frankly unacceptable that you are doing this. And what this also means is that... By the time this timed exclusive nonsense is out of the way, the next Call of Duty game will just be weeks away from release, making this COMPLETELY POINTLESS! Now, I'm sorry, Activision, but the fact you keep making decisions like this is the very reason why I refuse to play Call of Duty anymore. And apart from that, it is the most overrated franchise and should just wither away and die and never be seen again. No more Call of Duty, Activision. You have your money. Now invest it in real games. That's right. I said it. Call of Duty isn't a real game. In my eyes, it no longer exists. Absolute joke, Activision. Unacceptable. As Modern Warfare hits PS4, Xbox One, and PC on October 25th, newsflash, nobody cares! This means this mode will be locked out on competing platforms for just under a year, by which time the next Call of Duty will likely be out or nearing release. Naturally, Fans noticed the f this fine print immediately and word spread fast. Not only are Xbox and PC players upset about the exclusive mode, but PS4, but PS4 players are genu generally aren't particularly pleased with the exclusive either, especially with Modern Warfare being cross-play enabled, even if other Spec Ops modes don't appear to be timed exclusives. Even with previous Call of Duty games often have timed exclusive content on PS4. They had it on Xbox for a while. This appears to be one step too far for fans and here's how they've been reacting. Oh, I'm going to have a field day with this. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare News, yada yada yada. Um... Tom Schnaggle says, FR, for real? A full year? I'm going to be done playing this game by the time I can play Spec Ops. Why are you not loading anything else? Uh, 
this is going to be interesting. Right, since you refuse to load anything on my laptop, I hate you IGN sometimes. I really hate you sometimes. Right. I'm going to have to rely on my trusty phone. There we go, that's what we're after. Right, Sick Viscera. Sick Viscera said, Cutting maps from the base game before launch was one thing, but now cutting out an entire mode from a significant percentage of pl the player base for an entire year? Activision always finds a way to stoop lower than the year before. Oh, I could not agree more. Um, we got um, Ibrahim Hassan. I only own a PS4, but this is a cross-play game, right? What's the point of this? I would prefer the week. I would prefer the week or hell, even the month exclusivity compared to this. Mr. Dalek JD says, whoa. Whoa. Modern Warfare Spec Ops Survivor Mode is exclusively on PS4 for an entire year? This re that really sucks for Xbox and PC gamers. Imagine not being able to play zombies for an entire year whilst another platform does. What the heck? And one nutter replied to him saying, and we paid the same price for the same, and we paid the same price for the game, WTF. Lewis underscore attacker said, just proof they don't care for Xbox or P and PC. Uh, yeah. Flip that around just a few years ago, and Advanced Warfare had exclusive con had timed exclusive content for their multiplayer maps uh, on Xbox first before PlayStation. Heck, it even happened with Call of Duty Ghosts the year before. And I and I got Call of Duty Ghosts on Xbox 360. This was around about the same time the Xbox One was coming out, and the maps came out on Xbox One first before PlayStation. My, how the tables have turned. I guarantee if this happened with Xbox, Sony fans would be in uproar as well. Oh, wait. Everyone's in uproar. Someone's act someone actually got, he has the um, username Captain Price. An entire, the, an entire year, though? Seriously? What's even the point? That one guy, 22, with a zero? A new Call of Duty game will be releasing when this is out on Xbox and PC. WTF. Exactly. Raft Simmons. This is just horrible and I'm on PS4. Darkmore59. I decided to cancel my order for PC player. This is the this is the link you can use to cancel your pre-order. Yada yada yada. And Prince underscore Kassad. Thank you for the link. Just cancelled mine. Spilt milk, the next line says. While it's entirely understandable that fans would be upset over their news, Infinity War Studio narrative director Taylor Kurosaki responded to a fan on Twitter saying survival is only about 1% of the game and that the other 99% is simultaneous date and date across all platforms. Uh, no! I literally just watched a video on Angry... Uh, I just literally watched an Angry Joe video. Shout out to him for this. Um, that is an entire mode. That's not 1%. That is 10 to 20% of the entire game. His words, not mine. That is unacceptable. And it's also, and there's also a, a link to an article that says the cruel that talks about the cruel realities of white phosphorus. 
Newsflash, if I wanted to experience the cool realities of White Forest Forest, I would play Spec Ops The Line. That's what I would play to experience the cruel realities of white phosphorus. I would not go to Activision's overrated piece of junk to do this. I refuse to play Call of Duty anymore. Just unacceptable. Unacceptable. And since you're refusing to load as well, PC Gamer, thanks. Next up, uh, let's see. There you go. Three new games have been announced for Xbox Game Pass. Excellent! We've got new games for Xbox Game Pass for PC. Why can I, why can I not try it yet? Never mind. Anyway. Cities Skylines is among them. Ooh. Now let's have a look. This is on PC Gamer. Microsoft announced today during its monthly Inside Xbox Livestream that three additional games will be added to Xbox Game Pass for PC during September, bringing the month total to 10. Joining the likes of Gears 5 and Shadow Warrior 2 are the newly announced Dirt Rally 2.0, Cities, Skylines, and Saints, 4 Re Saints Row 4 Re-Elected. While still in open beta, Xbox, the Xbox Game Pass library is growing at a steady clip. Microsoft has even added newer first-party titles like Gears 5 and Forza Horizon 4 to its inventory, and the likes of The Outer Worlds will appear on the service on release day. Ooh, excellent. Xbox Game Pass for PC is currently $5, £4, pounds, or 5 Australian dollars while it's in open beta. And if you're not already a member, you can get it for just $1, one pound, or one Australian dollar for the first month for a limited time. I don't need to be concerned about that because I've got Game Pass Ultimate. I don't pay anything. It's because I managed to convert my Xbox, the remainder of my Xbox Live game time with the Xbox Game Pass time that I had left, I don't pay anything until March. So, oh, happy days. Right. I have articles that I've actually loaded now. Hallelujah. So, here we go. Ooh, hello. Dragon Ball Fighter Z reveals lovely new try before you buy DLC structure. Oh, if only more companies would in, would uh, uh, use this. Paid DLC characters will be available for free for a limited time. Excellent. Here's hoping this is a sign of things to come. Dragon Ball Fighters is introducing. SSGSS Gogeta to its roster and the character trailer revealed a welcome new DLC concept that lets you try paid DLC characters before you pull the trigger. The DLC Fighters free trial campaign will make previously available paid DLC characters free to play for a limited time, giving you time to make an informed decision about whether they're worth your hard-earned money. Like most Dragon Ball Fighters players, I'm 100% here for it. This is on Games Radar, by the way. According to SSGSS, Gogeta's reveal trailer, here's how it works. Free trial campaigns will run for set periods of time and introduce new paid DLC characters you can try for free. It isn't made explicitly clear, but it's safe to assume you won't get to keep the characters once the trial expires. The first campaign will, be, will begin October 12th, and make the base Goku and Vegeta models free for a limited time. The second trial starts November 2nd and lets you play as Fused Zam Zamasu and Cooler free of charge. Again, for a limited time. The trailer confirms that more free trial campaigns will follow. This is, shamefully, this is a shamefully rare concept in modern DLC models. Most games allow for clever workarounds that let you experience a DLC pack before you drop your dollars. Namely through refunds. 
but for a studio to willingly introduce a system that gives players a first-hand look at what they're potentially buying isn't especially popular with video game publishers, and it absolutely should be. Yeah, it should be popular with publishers. Activision. Anyway. Anyway. I really hope it's a sign of things to come. Right, so we've got an article on GameSpot now. Another board game is getting a movie. Jason Bateman in talks to direct it. Interesting. Right, I'll get that shortly, folks. Right, back again, folks. Uh, just had my shopping delivered uh, just there. And uh, look what came... And hey, look what came through the post. My latest rentals from Boomerang Rentals. I was concerned I wasn't going to get these today. But nevertheless... Let's see what I got. Uh, now this one feels pretty empty. There's a feels like a small cartridge. This will be a Nintendo Switch game, more than likely. Now let's see what we have. Oh, it came out of the. Oh, it came out of that. Ah, oh, Snooker 19. Decides to focus. Oh, well, yeah, Snooker 19. It won't focus. But anyway, but yeah, like I said, it's uh, Snooker 19. That's one of the rentals. Now this one feels much fuller. This will be a CD-based game, which means it will be either Xbox or PlayStation. Oh, my word. Fort Boyard, I loved this show when when I was younger. It, it used to be on Channel 5, then it went on to Challenge. And for a while, you could actually play along with Fort Boyard with uh, the red button. And uh, we actually managed, I actually managed to win a few times as well. Oh man, I can't wait to play these. Will they be in my top 10 games of 2019? Who knows? Because I've made sure that I keep my um, rental list stocked up with games that are coming out soon and games that I have that the games that I haven't played yet so yeah I'll give those a bash at the end of my podcast uh so yeah there we go anyway on anyway back to the regular schedule so here we go um let's have a look toys and board games being turned into movie feature length movies isn't a huge trend but we see a new film release every few years, with from 2012's Battleship to 2014's Ouija series. And there's still a Monopoly movie in the works. Oh boy, a Monopoly movie in the works. Now, Clue is getting its second big screen adaptation, and there are some big names attached. Clue, in other words, Cluedo. Ryan Reynolds will star in the upcoming film, yes, Deadpool, which was announced in early 2018. How does that slip past my radar? Now, Ozark's Jason, Jason Bateman is in talks to direct and star according to Deadline. This will be a live action film based on the Hasbro board game for Fox and Disney. Clue. We know it as Cluedo over here. Clue will also be written by Rhett, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick who scripted Reynolds starring Deadpool movies at the time of this writing. No release date has been announced. The original Clue film made its debut in 1985, written by Jonathan Lynn and John Landis, starring Tim Curry, Christopher Lloyd, great Scott, Michael McKean and Madeline Kahn! 
and the comedic and other comedic actors of that time. The film follows six guests invited to a mansion for a dinner party. The host of the event is killed, along with staff one along with the staff one by one, and they must find out who the killer is in this genuinely funny film. What was incredibly innovative about the original film was that during the theatrical showings, audience goers were shown one of three different endings, A, B, and C. In the home release of Clue, ending C was the true ending, and it's by far the funniest of the lot. As for the remake, if Bateman is hired, the film would be in great hands. The actor-director recently won an Emmy for directing a drama series for his work on Netflix Ozark. The streaming service took home four awards that, that night for the series Black Mirror, Ozark, and When They See Us. Interesting. Well... I'm definitely on board with that. Now let's see. Yesterday, Luigi's Mansion 3 is getting a release date. So what's it gonna be? Here we go. It's been six long years since Nintendo last released a game in the Luigi's Mansion series. And with fans beginning to give up hope of another, the announcement that a sequel will hit Nintendo Switch in 2019 is very welcome news indeed. Announced with a trailer during a Nintendo Direct on September 13th, 2018, the tentatively named Luigi's Mansion 3 is set to be released on Switch this Halloween. Very spooky indeed. Ooh. During Nintendo Direct at E3 2019, we got a bunch of new details about what we can expect from the next game in the spooky series. Here's everything we know about Luigi. Yeah, let's not worry about that. Hallo in time for Halloween, we're getting a new Luigi Luigi's Mansion game. Talking of which. Now, bearing in mind I've not played the other Luigi's Mansion games. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to Boomerang Rentals. There we go. Nintendo Switch coming soon. That's what we're after. Should be able to find it. For some reason, I can't seem to spot it at the moment. Ah, there you go. Luigi's Mansion 3. Boop. There we go. Add it to my list. Excellent. Now, a big congratulations is in order for PlayStation 4 as it topped an estimated 100 million units sold to consumers. Let's have a look. Sony Interactive Entertainment at the end of July 2019 announced it had shipped 100 million PlayStation 4 consoles in its lifetime as of June 30th, 2019. Two and a half months later, Sony's eighth generation home console, the PlayStation 4, has now sold over 100 million units to consumers according to VG Charts estimates. The PlayStation 4 reached the milestone for the week ending September 14th, 2019. That's uh, just two weeks ago. The console sold 221,443 units to bring its lifetime sales to 100 million and 62,220. Breaking down the sales by region, the console had sold an estimated 40 million 932,584 units in Europe, 30,104,007 units in the US, and 8,381,826 units in Japan. 
The PlayStation 4 launched in November 2019 in North America and Europe and February 2014 in Japan. That doesn't quite add up to the 100 million units. Anyway, a massive congratulations to them. And we have some Pokemon Go news now. I've just been playing some Pokemon Go earlier today. And I've just found a fresh article. Anyway, here we go. Pokemon Go has always had region-specific Pokemon, but with this new event, the whole world gets the chance to catch them. Niantic has announced the latest event to hit mobile, ga mobile game Pokemon Go, and it celebrates World Tourism. And it celebrates World Tourism Day on September 26th. When the event goes live, Mime Jr. will be available in 5k eggs in Europe. And for the first time, you might be lucky enough to, lucky enough to get a shiny version. Roar! Shiny! The event will also give players the chance to catch a sh Roar! shiny Zangoose. But sadly, Seviper can only be found in the US at the moment. Right. The event will also bring other changes, including earning a quarter less Stardust when trading, double experience points for spinning Pokestops, and a theme set of field research tasks for you to complete. Excellent. Here is a list of all the Pokemon that will come out of 5km eggs. However, they are still However, they are still region specific. Ah, oh, fantastic. So it's available worldwide, but also not available worldwide at the same time. Goodness sake. So don't expect, don't ex be expecting anything from the US or Japan. Ah, oh, great. <sighs> Just great. Chatot, Corsola, Durant, Farfetch'd, Heatmore, Heracross, Illumis, Kangaskhan, Lunatone, Mime Jr., Pachirisu, Panpour, Panpour, Pansage, Pansir, Relicanth, Serviper, Solrock, Tauros, Torkoal, Torpius, Volbeat, and Zangus. Oh, great. There are also new there is also a new shirt with the United Nations World Tourism logo on it, but we're unsure if it's available in Europe. The event starts at 1 pm local time and lasts September 26th up until 1st of October. Well, I suppose we're going to be testing that theory when uh, it all goes live later this evening because I've got seven hours to go at time of recording. Death Stranding has gone gold and PS Plus is not required for online. Ooh, excellent. This article I just found a few minutes ago. There's no danger of Death Stranding being delayed as Hideo Kojima has announced that the game is officially finished. A tweet from Kojima Productions has let everybody know that Death Stranding has gone gold. This means it's finished development and getting ready for mass production before going on sale on November the 8th. A tweet thanked everyone who put their heart and soul into the title with pictures of both Kojima and the whole development staff. This is absolutely fantastic. This is obviously fantastic news for fans waiting to play the long anticipated game as it means the game's release date is now set in stone. And this is the tweet that came out from Kojima Productions uh, in the early hours of this morning, in fact. Death Stranding is complete and has gone gold. Hideo Kojima, the Kojima Productions team, everyone at Sony and Gor Gorilla cast members all put their heart and soul into it. Thank you for your support. We can't wait to bring you a, a, a new a Hideo Kojima game. Play it on November the 8th. Which is, and that is on my playlist. 
That's not the only piece of good news. Death Stranding's online features will not require you to be a PlayStation Plus member to use them. While the game does not feature any traditional competitive play or co-op functionality, there is still an important online element. As described during the recent Tokyo Game Show demos, the game allows you to leave items and to help other players in their game, like an expanded version of the notes in Dark Souls and Bloodborne. You can even ask other players for help if your supplies are running out. Right. Uh, right. Dark Souls did did require you to have a PlayStation Plus account, but according to the limited edition Death Stranding PS4 Pro bundle pre-order page for Game UK, you can see the official shot of the box includes the fine print, paid for PlayStation Plus, paid for PlayStation Plus subscription required for online multiplayer, sold separately. Death Stranding does not require a PlayStation Plus subscription. With a little over a month to go until release, all that remains now is to find out whether the game is any good or not. Knowing Hideo Kojima, it will probably be a big fat yes. And just one more piece of news before we get into the achievements today. And it is as follows. Mario Kart Tour has a four ninety nine monthly subscription and no multiplayer. Hmm? Right, let's have a look. Nintendo's latest mobile game is already making a name for itself in terms of its missing options and expensive microtransactions. Oh boy. The first ever Mario Kart for mobile phones is out today while it's technically Free to play, the game does its level best to gouge as much money out of its players as possible. Oh, great. Just our luck. The most obvious way is via a £4.99 subscription, which opens up fast the 200cc races and the ability to unlock gold cosmetic items. And that's it. You can get a free two-week trial subscription, but you'll automatically be billed £4.99 after that. And you, if you don't, after that, if you don't manually cancel. The worst thing about the subscription is that ordinary items like new characters, cards, gliders, and gliders can only be obtained at random using in-game currency, which can also be bought separately using real money and have nothing to do with the subscription. You need five rubies to get one item, which costs around three pounds, depending on how many rubies you buy at once. And how many goes at getting a random item you have. It's all extremely grubby and unpleasant, especially as there's a limited edition launch pack that contains 45 rubies, 5 start tickets and 1 character for 19 And yet, we're not sure Nintendo is really to blame here. When Super Mario Run first came out, they tried the much more reasonable approach of a one-off fee to access all the content, but ordinary smartphone users deemed it outrageously expensive and the game was only a mild success. Subsequently, Nintendo has gone on to have much more success with traditional free-to-play games and random gacha, me uh, gacha mechanics, particularly in Fire Emblem's Heroes. What you can blame Nintendo for is the fact that Mario Kart Tour has inexplicably launched without a multiplayer mode. One will be added later, but at the moment, all you can do is waste the computer. Considering Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Switch is only £50, you're almost halfway there if you just buy the launch pack. Of course, you'll need a Switch console as well, but we hate to think how much more, how much more some people are going to end up spending giving the pur purposefully addictive gambling elements present, present in Mario Kart and other gacha games. Yeah, this is a game that kids can play. Microtransactions, did Nintendo not learn from EA's mistakes that they still refuse to admit from Star Wars Battlefront 2?
Oh, great. I've got to update my phone. Anyway, so it is time to get into our last piece of the day. No Battle of the Free games this time around, but we'll need to wait until next week for that. But for now, we can look forward to having 43 achievements to get to get the ever so famous 1000 Gamer Score! And that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, points and trophies time. So here we go. We'll go through the regular achievements first. So here we go. Building trust. Give a desired valuable to a friend. 15 gamer score. Drink. Uh, by the way, this is for Code Vein, published by Bandai Namco, and it looks like it's going to be something similar to the Dark Souls games. And it's Shift that were the developers this time around, not From Software. Anyway, drink deep. Right, we've gone. We've got the first achievement out of the way. Drink deep. Successfully use a special drain from a Pare back attack or launch attack. Fifteen gamer score. Resonant power executes a communal gift. 15 gamer score. The next set are worth 30 gamer score, so here we go. A weapon for every season. Equip every weapon type. Burning spirits. Unlock the ability to inherit 50 gifts. Deep trailblazer. Explore every part of the depths. Exalted reputation. Raise your reputation as a companion to rank 30. Gifted. Learn 50 gifts. Excluding those learned from acquiring a blood code. Miasma Manager, activate all mistles. Proven Devotion, receive 30 presents from friends. Revenant Requisites, equip every Blood Veil type. Together, until oblivion, listen to partner conversations 50 times while exploring. Ultimate Armament, Armament. upgrade a weapon to its maximum level. Unbreakable Veil, upgrade a Blood Veil to its maximum level. Weaver of Wills, collect every Blood Code. And then the next two are worth 50 gamer score. Gift gatherer, learn 150 gifts, gifts, excluding those learned when acquiring a blood code. And mender of minds, restore all vestiges. And there's one achievement left there. And then we've got a huge list here. A lot of them pretty much story based. But nevertheless, I'm going to go through them anyway. Uh, Blade Bearer and Cannoneer. Defeat the Blade Bearer and Cannoneer in Crypt Spire. 15 gamer score. And the rest will be worth 15 gamer score until changes. Butterfly of Delirium. Delirium de defeat the Butterfly of Delirium in the Ruined City Center. Coco's Memories. View Coco's Memories Echoes. Davis's Memories. View Davis's Memory Echoes. Dweller in the Dark. View the Dweller in the Dark ending. Gilded Hunter. Defeat the Gilded Hunter in the Ashan Cavern. Heirs, view the heirs ending, insatiable despot, defeat the insatiable despot in the dried up trenches, invading executor, defeat the invading executor in the howling pit, Juzo Mido, defeat the boss of the crypt spire, Juzo Mido, Louis' memories, view the Louis memory, view Louis' memories echoes, Mia's memories, view Mia's memory echoes, Oliver Collins, defeat Oliver Collins in the ruined city underground, Queen's Knight, defeat the Queen's Knight within your memory. Queen's Knight Reborn, defeat the Queen's Knight Reborn in the Provisional Government Outskirt. Skull King, defeat the Skull King in the Gowl of the Stagnant Blood. Successor of the Breath, defeat the Successor of the Breath in the Ridge of Frozen Souls. Successor of the Claw, defeat the Successor of the Claw in the City of Fallen Flame. Successor of the Ribcage, defeat the Successor of the Ribcage in the Cathedral of the Sacred Blood. Successor of the Throat, defeat the Successor of the Throat in the Crown of Sand. <gasps> to eternity, view the... To eternity ending, Yakumo's Memories, view Yakumo's Memory Echoes. The next one's worth 30 game score. Eo's Memories, view Eo's Memory Echoes, and Determiner of Fate, view every ending for 50 gamer score. Get all of that, and you get the equivalent of the Platinum Trophy here. Revenant Preeminent, 
unlocked all other achievements for 70 gamer score, and that's all 43 achievements to get you the Inverso Famous. There we go. Whew. There we go. And that brings us to the end of this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be about since following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latest day's notifications. So if you don't miss anything I do on this channel, you all know the drill by now. My reaction to The Last of Us Part 2 trailer on the left and my podcast playlist on the right. I don't know what I'm going to be doing this weekend, but we'll get something sorted out. And it'll be back to business on Monday. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. And as always, Stay faithful.